Welcome back! It's me again. So if you guys remember a couple months ago, more than a couple months, like back in uh, September, I went to Las Vegas and I made an appearance on Pawn Stars. I never released that vlog. I should release it sometime. I haven't seen this yet, so I'm going to watch it for the first time with you guys. And after we watch this, stay tuned because I'm going to release some backstage footage that I took on my secret camera watch that I don't have on right now. Alright, let's jump into it. Yeah, I downloaded the episode. i got to find where I'm at. I'm, I'm really excited for this because <laughs> I've been waiting. See, oh, the, here I am, wait. Chum, you want to take the thing off your head and maybe get to work? <laughs> oh, here, here, look. I, I remember him saying that when I was there. Chum, you want to take the thing off your head and maybe get to work? <laughs> There's my dad. <laughs> Here's me. I remember him saying that as I walked up. We did it in like two or three takes. By the way, this whole thing back here, this is a replica set. <laughs> he winked. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Well, all right. What do we got? I have a Rambo lunchbox and thermos from 1985. It was a cut. Let's listen to that one more time. I have a Rambo lunchbox and thermos from 1985. And thermos, yeah, it, they cut it out. Uh, we did this with like so many takes so that they, they chop it up a lot. Rambo, that's awesome. Back then, lunchboxes were kind of like your expression of who you were as a kid. You had a My Little Pony lunchbox, huh? <laughs> Just a real badass. I still have my Beavis and Butthead lunchbox upstairs. Makes sense, you're a butthead. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> my, my facial expression. <laughs> I have an original 1985 Rambo lunchbox. I acquired my lunchbox from my dad who gave it to me. He was a huge Rambo fan, loved the movies. I'm looking to get about $100. No, I'm not. I'm just looking to get on TV. This is interesting. I believe it was uh, 1972 the book was written and all the major Hollywood studios fought for 10 years on who was going to get the right to make the movie. At one point, Steve McQueen was going to play Rambo, Paul Newman was going to play Rambo, and then out of nowhere, Stallone writes, directs, pays for, and produces Rocky. Huh. Wins best picture for it, everything else. Yeah, all the stuff they're saying, like Corey and Chumley are acting like, yeah, yeah, they did this, 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 and this, like, you don't actually know these things. You looked this up five minutes before we came out here. It's supposed to look like I just walk in and it's natural and everything. And for those of you who don't already know, it's not like that. This is done in multiple takes and they tell you specifically what you can and can't do. Next thing you know, the studio pretty much rewrote Rambo's for him. Do you mind if I take a look at it? Go ahead. All yours. It's not in that bad a shape. Well, Thermos is a pretty big company. I think they made their stuff to last. And they just made 10 lunchboxes like this up until about 1985, and they started to produce everything in plastic because it just became much easier. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was probably one of the last years that they made any metal lunchboxes at all. All good things gotta come to an end eventually, huh? I had to wrap this thing up in bubble wrap to get it to Vegas on the plane. Bonus is that you do have the Thermos. What are you looking to get out of it? About a hundred bucks. About a hundred bucks. The thing is, is as popular as the movies are, there's not that huge of a collector's market out there for them. I'd offer you about 50 bucks for it. Okay, let's get one thing straight. I don't want to sell this thing. My dad, he loves this thing. and He, did, he didn't want to sell it either. My dad and I both love Rambo. And these guys don't want to buy it either. It's all about the TV show. It's all an act. I just came on this show to get on the show. I don't care about selling the lunchbox. In fact, I don't want to sell it. And it's not even mine to sell. If I did sell it, my dad would get the money. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll find a super fan. Okay, see the watch? The watch right over here. This is my camera watch and it's filming right now. And they don't know it. I'll show that footage once I'm done watching this. We'd really love to have it on a shelf. Yeah, I'm sure I will sell it eventually one day, but how much money do I want to invest in that? I mean... Meet me in the middle at 75. Nope. <laughs> I don't think so, man. It's just my dad did have it for a long time. Uh, I don't have to have it for 100, man. 75 is going to be the most I'm going to pay. It really will be. 
I appreciate the offer, but I, I'd have to get at least 100. Well, I appreciate you coming down. Appreciate your time, sir. Take care. They made me say that over again like four times. It's a little disappointing I didn't make a sale, but it's been in my family for a long time, so 70. Jeez, I look pale here. I should get a tan. I suppose I look a little more tan in this lighting angle. It's all about the light. It just wasn't enough, but I'll survive. Well, that's it. Okay. <laughs> that was funny. I'm going to watch it one more time. So let's talk about how this whole thing came about backstage and how the, this whole process went. Basically what I did was, uh, if you Google how to get on Pawn Stars, they'll, you can find this uh, email. You can send a picture of whatever you want to sell and they'll decide if it's good enough. And most people get turned down. I'll show you guys. I've got all this footage that I took on my camera watch. So this whole thing is actually a replica set. Like what you're seeing in uh, this video is different. Yeah, this whole thing, yeah, it's not very good, but yeah, this is the real pawn shop that you walk in and there's customers in. Most people don't know this, like this door is fake. They just say stand by the fake door and you walk in. All the extras in the background, they go out into the store and say, any volunteers to be extras? And they bring them back to the replica set and they're all instructed to be quiet. They can't say anything. Not much of anything interesting happens out in the shop. Let's skip to a... Uh, Backstage. Sorry for the poor uh, angles on this. So the lady finds me that I was emailing, and then she takes me back to this back room. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah, this this is their backstage area that nobody ever sees. Yeah, this room. This room right here, uh, Chumley was in it. My dad pointed that out. You can't really tell in the video, and I didn't catch him on camera, but yeah, Chumley was in there. Yeah, I was like, that's Chumley, that's Chumley. At this point, we don't know who my guy is, or who, who I'm gonna be filming with. We have to pay the tax on it, so it's really less. And who the best guy by? Uh, this one is the Oreo Jim Pong. Are you so comfortable? Oh, cool chairs. Yeah. They're cool looking, but they're not very comfortable. <laughs> I have to ask, you're over 18, right? Yes, you okay. sure. Just making sure. You're sure you're my age. I, I'm 21. If I wasn't 21, I wouldn't have come to Vegas. But I came to Vegas when I was like in the second grade, so. Hi, I'm Paige. Hi, Paige. I'm the field producer for the show. Hi, I'm Rusty. Hi, Rusty. Hi. Hi, I'm Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Okay, so this is when... Uh, the lady comes in, sits you down, and says how things are going to go, what you can and can't do. And the biggest thing she says was you can't reference the show. You can't talk about that you're on a show. It's basically you're supposed to act like it's totally normal and you're not on a show. This is what I love about YouTube is it's not like that. I'm totally real. Like, this isn't staged right now. Everything I'm doing is real. I'm, I'm really talking to you guys through this camera. This isn't like a scripted thing. Don't look in the camera and don't like acknowledge that you're on a Don't look in the camera. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to talk here. I'm not going to look at you guys at all. But like he said in the video, he was there about uh, three or four years before. Uh, he had an original big boy on it. I should show that footage if I can find it. But anyway, he had his big boy on uh, Pawn Stars. He had Rick was his guy that he dealt with, and he wasn't very nice. So we wanted anybody but Rick, but she mentioned Rick's name, so we were afraid it was going to be Rick. We don't usually get too many uh, young guys on the show, so it's yeah. good to see age difference. <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind of cool. Um, any they, questions for me? Would they actually say, hey, this is my dad's, and would they say, does he know you're selling it? Would they say something like that? I mean, I don't know. I think you can say, why are you selling it? Like, why are you selling it? Yeah. To get on I know, you can't reference the <laughs> no, show. I know, I know. Like I said many times, that is the real reason. They bring in the sound guy to put a microphone on me. I'm just going to drop this straight down your t-shirt. Waiting in the Pawn Stars office and you're watching MSNBC on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. We were out in Vegas and he was just in the hotel room all day watching MSNBC and Dr. Phil. You're taking him to an electric chair? Yeah, yeah. I tell cheesy jokes. Yeah, this right here is like their back office set where they do all their talking and business and everything. They don't actually run that pawn shop. They're just actors mostly. This here is their set for that. These are all the extras. You're going to take... 
your item and walk up. I'll show you exactly what Walk up. Got all their their crew and everything. So they just had me sit. They just had me stand here until she signals me. Check out all their <laughs> trusses and lights up top. There we go. <laughs> Take that. Thing. Yep, that's what they said. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Right. It sounds so much different when you're there in person without the music and all that. It's just quiet and eerie. What do you got? Um, I have a Rambo lunchbox. Uh, original from 1985. Rambo? That's awesome. The matching thermos. Here, I'll show it to you. Remember? Now, you, this, so this is when you get to hear all the dumb comments that I made that they cut out because they were too dumb. Um, it reminds me of myself. <laughs> Just a real badass. Yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, same here. Yeah. Such a badass. Can't you tell? So where in the world did you get this? From my dad. Do you mind if I pull this out? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, he gave it to me. He was a huge uh, Rambo fan, huge Sylvester Stallone fan. Uh, he, he bought it back in uh, 85, and he's had it ever since, and he gave it to me. Okay. Um, definitely a sign of the times, man. Um, I can't imagine sending my kid to school today with a uh, lunchbox of a Vietnam vet who had severe PTSD and... Um, you know, killed a couple cops and uh, basically took the town <laughs> hostage. See, th that's a good point that they brought up. They cut that out of the final thing. Back then, a little kid could bring a lunchbox to school of a guy, I mean, holding the rocket launcher on the front of it. You would not get away with that today. Had severe PTSD and, um, you know, killed a couple cops and uh, basically took a town hostage. Times have changed. Um, yeah, that's... Kind of like the equivalent of having a Kill Bill lunchbox or something today. Yeah. Um, it is thermos though. I mean, pretty big brand, right? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was the biggest. I mean, they didn't make metal lunchboxes much longer after this, that's for sure. At least you got the actual thermos with it though. That's the big thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So tell me what you know about it. Um... Basically, all I know about it is, like I said before, he bought it back in 85 and he's had it ever since. Uh, and it's it's all original. It's been in, it's been kept in decently good condition. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. If you look at the thermos, there's hardly any marks on it at all. Uh, uh, I say uh, a lot. It's like, um, and it's got a thermos, uh, and it's got a lunchbox, uh, and... Uh, Look at Chumley. Their camera footage is a little yeah, bit yeah. better. As far as the history goes, it's just... I mean, it looks like it may have been dropped a few times, but for being a kid's lunchbox yeah. from the 80s, uh, it doesn't look like it's in bad shape at all. Um, um, so do you know much about the story at all? Yeah, uh, I've, I've seen uh, two of the movies. Okay. Um, yeah, we actually watched the movies. I watched them a week before because I'd never seen them before. <laughs> uh, I watched them just because I was going to go on the show. Great so, movies. I believe it was uh, 1972 the book was written, and all the major Hollywood studios fought for 10 years on who was going to get the right to, to make the movie. Um, at one point, Steve McQueen was going to play Rambo, Paul Newman was going to play Rambo, uh, Robert De Niro was going to play Rambo. Does he get like go backstage and memorize this before he comes out? And then, like, Basically, out of nowhere, Stallone comes out, he writes, directs, um, pays for, and produces Rocky. Um, you know, wins Best Picture for it, everything else, and um, they pretty much rewrote the whole movie for him. You know, um, like I said, a sign of the times. I mean, I believe it was Rambo 3 was rated by Guinness Book of World Records at the time as the bloodiest, most goriest movie ever made. Or most violent movie ever made, something like that. Really? <laughs> it's just, <clears throat> yeah. It just seems so much more awkward in the in the raw environment setting. 
you know, like I said, sign of the t- sign of the times. I believe it was Rambo three was considered by the Guinness Book of World Records as the most violent movie ever made, and people were totally cool with letting their kids go to school with a lunchbox like this. Yeah, I mean, you know, back then, too, lunchboxes were kind of like your expression of who you were as a kid. Yeah, I mean... If you were a Batman guy, you had a Batman lunchbox. If you were a Spider-Man guy, you had a Spider-Man lunchbox. If you were a Rambo guy, you had a Rambo lunchbox. You know, that was what you were into. That's what you thought was cool. And that's what you absolutely had to have every year before you started school was your new lunchbox and the new thing you were into. That's... You had a My Little Pony lunchbox, huh? I still have my Beavis and Butthead lunchbox upstairs. Beavis and Butthead is in the same category as Rambo. I don't think a kid should be going to school with that kind of lunchbox. That explains a lot. What lunchbox did you have? Beavis and Butthead. Makes sense. You're a Butthead. I don't know what a Beavis is, but I'll call you that. What are you looking to get out of it? About a hundred bucks. About a hundred bucks. You know, you're gonna have to be in almost pristine, pristine condition for that. It's just not there. I mean, it's it's in good shape. The thing is, is there there, there was a couple things as in popular it. as the movies are. There's not that huge of a collector's market out there for them. Yeah, I mean, did they spin it off to cartoons and everything else? But it never really got to that, like, cataclysmic, you know, everybody had to have its super collectible Star Wars kind of thing there. Um, I'd offer you about 50 bucks for it, man. I don't know, man. I mean, it, it is... For, do, it, I mean, you get a lot of people here. Rando guy comes in. He'll... Uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll find a super fan would really love to have it on a shelf um, yeah, I'm sure I would I'm doing a lot of this with my hands <laughs> that's why the watch is going I'm everywhere eventually one day but how much money do I want to invest in that it's up to you I understand I, care. I mean you know Chumley I heard once that he makes like $25,000 an episode so Corey probably makes way more he doesn't care about 75 bucks he's just there for this show we're all it's maybe in the middle at 75. I don't think so, man. It's just... I don't have to have it for 100, man. So. And that is where my watch ran out of battery and stopped recording. But there it is for you guys. You got to see some backstage footage of Pawn Stars. You got to see me react to myself on Pawn Stars. Anyway, hit subscribe. Hit like. I know you've heard it a million times, but do it anyway. 